a toy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, which is actually one of the reasons for the the way the Turn A Gundam is was made, I believe. Turn A Gundam, to an extent, is sort of Tomino's response to the fact that everyone was treating Gundam like a story about toys. Hmm. The fact that it had become this um, this story about war and the story of, the, well, I mean, one of Gundam's themes is that war is horrible, mm. and war is this thing that should be avoided at all costs. And yet, what the fans did is they said, that, that's really interesting. Keep showing us more of that. Um, keep showing us more wars and more destruction and more explosions and more of that stuff. People enjoyed the part that was supposed <laughs> to be demonstrative of the horrors of it. Right. So, um, Turn A Gundam is designed to be, to have no large-scale conflicts. Hmm. There are, there is no big, there are no big war scenes. Uh, the main character is a pacifist. Um, the main character not only doesn't want a pilot, he just wants to be a farmer. He just wants to be a, a very normal person. Um, and so, to a, a very strong, in a very strong way, it deals with this idea of um, having a very different perspective on the story. Yeah, th it sounds like uh, uh, a very realistic approach to war. Uh, mm. Conscription. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the idea that you got to do it because it has to be done. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not something that. And granted, some people join because they want to do stuff like mm. that, and others join for the necessity. There's many different mm -hmm. motivations. Sure. But yeah, being being able to realize, hey, okay, <laughs> growing up, responsibility. Yeah. I want to protect the ones I love. Well, and that's the thing, and that, that is exactly what Laurent, the protagonist of Turn A Gundam, um, is doing it for. He's trying to directly protect other people who are kind of there on the battlefield, and other people who are being directly threatened by this thing. It's much less abstract than Gundam is, mm. which again is part of the you know that's that's one of the things Gundam is trying to say, uh, but Turn A is kind of saying a, a very different thing from a different perspective. Um, well, and the plot of Gundam went a certain way, and it's not necessarily the way that the staff originally went, uh, attended. Oh, really? Um, the director, particularly, had a very different idea for the show. One of, the, one of his ideas is that um, Amuro should be um, a soldier from the get-go. He should have been a test pilot. Because, come on, what 15-year-old kid can climb into a giant robot and pilot it right out of, you know, <laughs> out of the gate? There is, is some amazingness in <laughs> yeah. there. Of course, he did find the manual, but yeah. the idea that he found the manual and had uh, quick learning experience. <laughs> and But, of course, then the, the ability to do so is enhanced by mm. the new type concept. Right. I, 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 if, if that idea was introduced earlier on, mm. I would have found it easier to accept a, a 15 yeah. year old <laughs> piloting something like that. Yeah. And in defense, they, they did show that he's kind of a maker. Yeah. He, he hobbies, he, he toys around with electronics and such. But even more significantly, uh, in, in Tomino's original concept, uh, two thirds of the way through, Amaro dies. Oh. What? He gets blown up. What? Yep, that what? was the original. Was, was, was that a. Was that a Manga or no? That, that was that, that was going to be what was going to happen in the TV show. How did that not happen? <laughs> well, because it's multiple people working on it. One of the things that um, one of the things that's different about um, Sunrise, the studio that makes this, is that they they believe very strongly in collaboration hmm. and in having multiple different people's perspectives on a show. So. One of their ideas, so you know, he said, "This is what I want to do," but other folks disagreed and said, "That's not going to make for a." No. Uh, you, you know. You can't kill him. He's great. Right. Well, you, you can't kill the main character, um, so to speak, and so he was kind of voted down, <laughs> so to speak. Wow. Um, yeah, the original idea was that Amaro would die, and then um, Shar would team up with Whitebase, hmm. and they would lead a joint attack on Zeon where they would wipe out the remaining Zabi family. Whoa. Um, so it would be that. And then um, Shar would take over as the new ruler of Zeon at the end of the series. Um, and we know this because Tomino then wrote a three light novels, three short novels, 
of his version of the of the story. I was wondering how that survived to yeah. occur. So, so um, light novels, light novels, so very short novels, and they've they have been translated into English and actually published over here in America. So you can buy these. You, you can buy a copy of this novel. Um, it's it's available on Amazon, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of get his his view on events. Uh, in fact, if you look at the credits for Gundam, and indeed any Sunrise show, you'll see created by, particularly for Gundam, created by Hajime Yatake. Hmm. There's, both jo Yoshi there's both Yoshiyuki Tomino, the director, and Hajime Yatate. And you'll see Hajime Yatate on Cowboy Bebop, on Infinite Rebias, oh, wow. on all sorts of these shows, because that's a pseudonym for the entire staff. Oh... Exactly. That is basically their way of saying this was created by all of us, and we want to kind of rem remember, you know, rem remind everyone and honor the fact that this is a group effort. You know, it's amazing that group efforts can lead to such wonderful things, mm -hmm. because so often group efforts don't. <laughs> there, there's the famous joke: uh, "What is a camel?" Mm. A camel is a horse that was designed by a committee. <laughs> so, so true. Uh, the idea that uh, uh, consistency and a mm. good story can come out of that is 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 always intri intriguing. Yeah. And it must be incredible to to sit in the room and see how these stories get negotiated <laughs> out and and developed. Yeah. Oh, we could do this, but no, we have this conflict, or we can't mm. do that because the storyline of these people. Uh, in yeah. this episode, I wonder how far out into the future they actually Good question. plan that. Yeah, I'm sure it depends on the show and all that stuff. Well, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the uh, one of the reasons for that, well, the, the primary reason they do that is because they all came from Mushi Productions, Mushi Pro, which is the studio started by Osamu Tezuka. Creator of Gundam. That name sounds familiar. Yes, and he did the creator of anime, basically. <laughs> um, however, um, okay, how does that fit in? Uh, hmm. uh, <laughs> ah, okay, that's interesting. Ah, okay. I find um, myself use it, sticking my tongue into the corner yeah. of my mouth as I ponder. On exactly. <laughs> um, and and so um, he quite famously. Uh, Tezuka, that is, was, shall we say, rather autocratic in how he did his shows. It was kind of his way or the highway. And they got so, frankly, annoyed with that that they said, um, we're going to start our own studio where we're all going to be able to collaborate and work together as a group. And there's a way. I've seen two different times when it... One where that style works and one mm -hmm. where that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If a person has a very strong vision for what they want, mm -hmm. that can work. But if they don't, then it just absolutely frustrates people who are trying to contribute creative endeavors. Yeah. yeah. But if they have a strong vision of, and know exactly what they want, mm. then they can delegate out the parts that are less mm -hmm. uh, vital to the vision yeah. and allow creative endeavor. So so they got upset and decided that, that they were going to do... Yeah, they're going to form their own studio and uh, kind of do it their way, so to speak. Wow. Um, which, uh, you know, say that's, what That's pretty will. gutsy. Uh, it's certainly gutsy. Yeah. And they... That goes there. Ah, I see. Okay. So yeah, so they did that and, uh, and they started Sunrise, this, this very famous studio. Um, you know, obviously sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works better than others. One of the other things they wanted to do is they, they wanted to specialize in giant robot shows. Giant robot shows. <laughs> and why do you think that might be? Uh, I suppose they had some skills in that, maybe. They did. That's one reason. Can you think of any other reasons why one might want to tell the world that you're making giant robot shows? Hmm. I don't know. Why, why would that be? Well... Good reason is because giant robot shows make money. Oh. They are a very effective way to merchandise. 
robots because you have all these giant robots in them that could turn into plastic toys, kind of like these. Oh, perfect idea. You're making, yeah. Oh. And so they said, got a, "Have you got a leg?" I got a leg. You got an arm and a leg. Yes, yeah, so well, I have Two a smaller arms. kit than you than you do. <laughs> um, much uh, simpler kit. What he's not telling you is he's already finished his first kit. He's on to yeah. his second kit. <laughs> Two small kits, one big kit. Um, so yeah, so they said basically we are going to um, emphasize to those who want to finance the anime that we're good at this and we can, we're can we going to be the studio to count on to make giant robot shows. That's a brilliant idea. It really Good was. strategy. And, uh, and it paid off. And so they were able to work with a lot of, with, uh, with some important companies like Bandai. Mm. Uh, it's been around for decades and decades. It's a toy company. The powerhouse. The powerhouse, exactly. And that actually kind of saved their skin in Gundam's case because... Gundam had this issue. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so Gundam had had this issue that it was rather. Um, but as you mentioned earlier, Gundam didn't do very well when it first came out, and but fortunately, Bandai was just finishing up a new process for plastic model kits, which allowed them to make very cheap very high detail model kits, kind of like these. Oh, the technology. Yep, the technology caught up with them. So when they w went to make their new, um, you know, these new model kits, let's see if I can read that correctly. That should be pointing down that way. Um, suddenly they could make these model kits that were very detailed and it looked really, really good. And because um, these shows had a complex set of giant robots. You know, it wasn't just hero versus villain. It was here's you know here's Shar's original Red Zaku, and then here's his, his next um, matching it. suit. And here you know the Black Tri Stars. Why you need three model kits for that? Suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> the proliferation of design mm -hmm. and the enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a lot harder to sell model kits when the, the, the good guy is only fighting one bad guy at a time. Uh, but when you have these these big set piece battles, I saw an amazing um, Gundam model kit set up where they were portraying. They had a piece of Abo Aku, and they were portraying a um, a Zaku that was flying over it, attacking somebody else. And so they had they had bought like eight Zakus and wow. set them up in sequence as though they were flying <laughs> as a thing. And you see it sort of raising its arms up in the sort of stop motion sequence. Oh. did a great job of getting, getting that across. Nice. Brilliant. Um, so yes, yeah, so you have, have those, these big dioramas and a lot of model kits. So they sold very well. And that w enabled Gundam uh, or Sunrise to make more Gundam shows and do the compilation movies. We should mention that. Um, the compilation movies were, again, kind of an attempt to get some more interest in Gundam. They basically um, took the footage. Nice. <laughs> cool. I think you have the beginnings of a, um, of a new model of mobile suit there. It's coming you together. Know, head on the front. <laughs> you can do some fun things there. Just, just got to make sure you strike in the right spot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so they did this whole thing with, excuse me, that's going to go down there, I think. Um, so the compilation movies are edited down versions of the story from original Gundam. Hmm. So you've got the, the same basic plot, um, but much more condensed. Oh, wow. And the same animation, of course. Um, that's backwards. So, so sort of an, an overview of... Yeah. Um, and some some things are, are significantly changed, um, you know, in terms of what happens when. But what did I do wrong there? Um, oh, I need to turn that around. E four because it's backwards, intentionally so, but still. There we go. Sometimes knowing which way is front is, is <laughs> can, it can be tricky. Yeah. I have to look for the markings. Oh, there's two lines on this side and one on this side. Yeah. This is a particularly unusual one because this is one of the Sid Mead designs, Return A Gundam. And so they have this sort of high heeled that's the, the, the foot. So that's that's the ground mm. like that. 
So it has this strange high heel design. And they, well, it's called a flat because it's, well, flat. It's got yeah, this very it's thin a, design. It, it looks like uh, that could fold up and make it more aerodynamic for well, other scenarios. It's funny you should mention that. It, it can do exactly that, as we will see here hopefully in the next few minutes. I wonder how much of modeling mm. has influenced actual real world design and vice yeah, versa. Good question. And, well, and certainly for, for anime series, they think about how this will be. Yeah, they, when they're designing the mecha for the anime series, they're thinking in the back of their minds about how easy this will be um, made into a plastic model kit. Um, that's certainly an important consideration. You don't want to make something too, too crazy, but also sometimes if it's really crazy, it looks awesome. Yeah. So you see that in Gundam Seed a lot, where they went with flashier designs that make for really, really pretty um, uh, model kits. And it's a trade-off, as is everything else. Now we're getting into some orange. Ooh, that yeah. is very orange. Very orange. Yeah, one of the weird things about Ternay, and I know we're not here to talk about Ternay, but uh, Ternay is set in a time where there's a much more advanced um, set of humanity that have you know, mobile suits. So mm -hmm. the idea was to give them a very distinctive visual style. Um, so they look like they are... Like they've evolved. The future will. of the future. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Gundam is, is definitely was was definitely a, a shock when it came out in terms of being so serious. And compared to the shows, and there were certainly serious anime before, but the the level of when they said they wanted to make a cinema uh, a um, what's the term. Um, not cinematography, a um, cinematographic, hmm. cinematographic anime series. They wanted it to feel like a movie, in the sense of the progression of plot, in the sense of the maturity of how it's presented. It did seem more like cinema, and I think uh, I think that 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 level of cinematic of uh, realistic issues. Mm -hmm really adds to it. It, yeah. it. it says, yeah, this is animation, mm -hmm. but animation can be of a mature theme. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the story is definitely, you know, can be appreciated by a number of ages mm. uh, just because of life's experiences, and it deals with uh, the kind of uh, experiences that people go through in real-world scenarios mm. of, of battle, of love, of loss, of Mm. Of, of trust, of grief, of uh, 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 ambivalence, and secrets. And the, all these different things uh, come up in real-world scenarios. Of course, there is the other world scenario of, hey, we've finally gotten through to space. <laughs> we're not only through to space, but we're colonizing. Not mm -hmm. only are we colonizing, but we're advanced beyond just the basics of colonizing and mm. years where things have progressed. Oh, surprise, there's still uh, conflict within the world. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. I have a break here, too. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, there's there's quite a lot of, of human, maturity to it. Yeah, human nature, <laughs> even though the technology has advanced, human nature is still thus that uh, mm. we must battle each other for control and... Mm -hmm. There's going to be innocent bystanders in the process. Yeah. Great example of that actually is is about halfway through the scene where uh, Amuro finally finds his mother again. Oh. That was that was that was that was a, a kind of a hard scene to watch. Yeah. Um, I felt like Amuro was. Uh, his mother was saying stuff, but I thought he could let it roll off his back a little mm. bit more. She obviously is not experienced all the things he's <laughs> experienced, so he should kind of recognize that. Yeah. And it's his mom. I mean, what mm. is he, he, I felt like he was almost abandoning her. She, yeah. He could have humored her a little bit and just yeah. sort of said, yes, mom, I know, but maybe it's a maturity level. I think so. I, I think, you know, Amro is 15, and he's just barely, you know, he's, he's not able to deal with this stuff very, very well, um, sadly. At first, when he met his dad, I thought, 
Well, maybe he's got mm. something, and then, uh, then they just kind of showed that, no, he's, he's, he's lost it. That <laughs> was so tough. Oh, that was really tough, yeah. Yeah. yeah his, his, his dad is just gone. Um, and it's, it, I mean, it's a great metaphor, too, for them. I mean, we all know folks who are just not what they were before. Um, and it's just really tough to, uh, to see that, to deal with it. And Amaro has to deal with it. So, so some, another, another case of uh, realism, maturity, and mm -hmm. real-world scenarios mm -hmm. the, dealing with uh, mental illness to some yeah. degree, yeah. whether it's organic or whether it's in, imposed by oxygen debt, as and I think they refer yes, to. Yes, and let's not forget what caused that. Amaro! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of leaked the atmosphere. So Which, I wonder if he has some guilt there, yeah, too. Yeah, I think so. And that can't be difficult, can't be easy. And of course, Amuro is growing up real fast. To use um, Bright's quote from the Bright Slide, you know, you got to grow up real fast, Amuro. <laughs> Which is again a theme of the show that Amuro does need to do that. Thrown into the cauldron of uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> turmoil. Yeah, it's it's tough you stuff. You got to sink or swim. Yeah. Yeah, that moment when yeah that moment when. Amuro finally comes home and finds all the Xeon soldiers in his home. Hey, that's my home. That's, what oh, are you doing here? Yeah, that, that really drove home Whoa. a lot of the... Uh